Hi, I'm Michael Short, and in this video, I am having a conversation with Adrian from Groundhog, and um, we're going to learn a little more about him and about Groundhog and how it could help us with our websites. Well, thank you for the, the lovely introduction. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to be a part of this, and thanks so much for inviting me and taking the time to, to introduce me to your uh, very active group. Uh, they, they've certainly uh, have influenced a lot of the decisions that, that we've actually made of recent uh, kind of with a very short introduction that we had, I don't know, maybe about a month ago. So I appreciate the opportunity to, to explain, you know, why, why we're here and, and, and how this can greatly improve the, the lives of people who use WordPress as a service uh, when kind of making their way through the world. Yeah, awesome. We're glad to have you a part of the group for sure. I know that um, there's many of us in there that are excited to start implementing Groundhog. Um, I'm one of them. And... So to start, tell me a little bit more about what Groundhog is. So uh, I've actually been in the marketing automation industry for, for a long time. Um, many of your users are probably familiar with software such as ActiveCampaign or Infusionsoft might ring a couple of bells. Uh, and those softwares came out a while ago. Infusionsoft actually all the way back in something like 2001. They've been around for or 2001 or 2003, a very, very long time. Uh, I was an Infusionsoft certified partner uh, at first. So what I would do is I would work in a digital marketing agency and I would implement marketing automation strategies uh, for small businesses here where I'm located in Toronto. Um, I was a certified partner. Uh, I got certified at 18, which was a while ago now. And then I maintained my certified partnership for about five years following that. Uh, really uh, learning how to use Infusionsoft very, very, very well and implementing a lot of pretty, pretty advanced strategies that most other uh, business owners would not necessarily be able to communicate well. Uh, and then after that, that five-year period, something that became a recurring theme throughout uh, my, uh, my tenureship there was essentially that no business owner themselves could ever do what we were doing that it, it was way too complicated and uh, the, the steps were there were way too many steps in order for a business owner that really just wanted to send a couple of emails maybe once a month or whatever and set up uh, a lead capture campaign there was no way that uh, any reasonably talented business owner would be able to do that in a reasonable amount of time and it became clear to me that uh, a different solution had to exist out there. So I, so I set out and I started looking at other things like ClickFunnels or ActiveCampaign. And what I noticed was all of them had a lot of pros and cons. You know, one was really expensive, really good, but they're very, very, very expensive. Or one was uh, inexpensive, wasn't already understand, already know, uh, and, and already love. And, and that is the, the WordPress platform. And it, it's not exactly our first go around in making a WordPress plugin either. Uh, as an Infusionsoft certified partner, I made another plugin called Formlift, which was a lead capture plugin, uh, primarily for the Infusionsoft community that would help integrate Infusionsoft and WordPress a little bit more seamlessly than any of the solutions that had existed prior. And that's, and that's really how we came about deciding that Groundhog was, was something that we were gonna pursue. It's about making marketing automation just more accessible to the everyday business owner that has a WordPress website, they, you know, they have a guy on Fiverr, they have a guy on Upwork and they can say to the guy on Fiverr, Hey, listen, you know, I'm looking at this plugin groundhog. Uh, they have a bunch of templates. Can you just set it up for me? And bing, bang, boom, it's free. It's no cost. Or at least, you know, if the, unless you buy extensions, it's very limited cost. And it would be something that would be accessible for, for most people. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, are you, now, I imagine you're using Groundhog on Groundhog.io, obviously. Yes. So we, we practice what we preach. Uh, currently, all of, our, all of our stuff is running through our own, our own system, essentially. Of course, we, we've, uh, we have our own modified version. So we have a lot of extra stuff that we don't, that we don't publish publicly, uh, simply because it helps us run a lot of the, um, uh, for example, we have the Groundhog delivery service, and we have a whole bunch of other stuff that we kind of just use on our site. But for the most part, it is just a, a pretty standard, pretty standard install of Groundhog. Like we update it through the plugin repository ourselves, as any other person would in their own website. Oh, that's great. How long have you been a programmer? Have you start? Did you start off that way? I know you said you worked as a certified um, Infusionsoft. Mm -hmm. So I, I actually I went to uh, I went to the University of Toronto for computer science. 
uh, mm -hmm. for three years until I dropped out in order to actually pursue this. So uh, I, like I had said, I, the first thing I built was Formlift, lead capture plugin for Infusionsoft, which did okay. It actually has, at the moment, a thousand active users. Mm -hmm. uh, at least that's what's displayed by the WordPress repository at the moment. So it did okay. Uh, and I actually still uh, manage that community as well. And that was my, my first go around. And I built that during uh, going to university uh, for computer science. Uh, and then this opportunity kind of, kind, kind of came about and, uh, and it was the decision made that we were gonna do it ourselves, that we weren't going to pay literally, and in our case for the agency that I was working for, it was over a thousand dollars a year, um, a month in fees to various automation, marketing automation companies. And we was like, well, we're just gonna cut all of that out and we're gonna replace it with our own solution. And we actually only started building this in August. And it's at the point where it is now. August of 2018, you're saying? August of 2018. Wow, and when did you launch it? Because I, I think you launched it shortly after, right? Like short, shortly after. The, the actual time to soft launch was very short. We soft launched it at, around the end of November. And then an official 1.0 release was released in on February 2nd, Groundhog Day. Oh, that's amazing. How many people do you have working on the project? Uh, at the moment, uh, we have, well, let me count. I have one over there. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. I have six people working on the project, including myself. From what I understand, you're trying to build an ecosystem as well so that you have other developers building out um, yes. So, so extendability is very, very, very important to me. Uh, I personally, uh, I don't know, I can't speak for everybody, but I personally have a strong belief that open source is kind of the best way forward, not just for our company, but for society in general. Mm -hmm. uh, I am a large believer that when, when products are made freely available, that the only thing that they can be is better than what they currently are. Uh, and I have, I have a little bit of a disdain for, for when, because, uh, that belief comes from when I was an Infusionsoft certified partner. You'd always see people saying, hey, it would be great if, you know, it would, this would fix that or whatever. And then those, those features or those changes that were recommended were just never implemented and, and kind of just shut, shuffled under the carpet. And I'm like, well, I don't want to run a company that, that experience or, or that provides that kind of experience to our clients. So I want everybody to have an equal opportunity in order to, to really make Groundhog the solution that works perfectly for them. So it was very, very, very important to me that uh, everything was open source, that there are lots of hooks and, and whatnot in the plugin itself in order for people to be able to build their own uh, extensions and build on top of Groundhog as kind of the base platform that it is, and then personalize it to their industry. And that's pretty amazing that you built it that quickly and that you've implemented all of those uh, features and capabilities. I, I'm impressed because as you probably know, we develop WASP, we have a WASP Pro plugins, um, portion of our business that we're, we develop. We have about nine different plugins. And, and they all end in pro. <laughs> they all end in pro, yeah. It would just kind of keep a nice theme going there. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it, it's a lot of work. There's a lot that goes behind it. I mean, I mean, just building the plugins themselves is a challenging task, a daunting task. But then you have the marketing that goes behind it. Um, you have the sales that goes behind it. And then you have the mm -hmm. customer support that goes behind it. So I, I'm quite impressed to see what you've done in such short amount of time. Um, well, for, fortunately, it's not just me. I, I do have a significant amount of, of help around me in order to, to kind of produce this. I'm mainly responsible for uh, personally product development as, as well as um, I do a lot of the support as well since I am kind of the, the main developer. And then I have uh, people around me who are taking care of comms as well as marketing. Mm -hmm. um, I have an exclusive deal with a, with a marketing agency in the area that uh, uses this product for all of their uh, clients as far as marketing automation goes. So, so that th those have really been able to, to help uh, as well. So I can't take all the credit. <laughs> so it's kind of like a trade in services. So yes. you to that's awesome. That's a great way to utilize what you got already built. So that's perfect. I like it. Um, what, what kind of plans do you have for it in the future? Well, the, well, the, the overarching goal is, is the 30%. So, uh, uh, we have a, we have a little ways to go until there, and, and when I say thirty percent, thirty percent of all of the internet is is run with WordPress, right? And then if uh, going down, uh, you can kind of find the thirty percent rules. So if you take an industry, say e-commerce, thirty percent of all e-commerce is also WooCommerce, and and it kind of trickles down thirty percent of all 
you know, migration systems are the, are the WordPress community. So the, the WordPress community, at least the larger plugins that we have, is kind of the 30% rule all the way down. And we'd really like to be kind of the 30% of, of CRM and internet or, and uh, email marketing. Because the, when, when you make things more accessible, it's just kind of people gravitate towards that. We're not looking to, of course, make bank. CR, email uh, marketing and CRM is an $18 billion industry after all. Mm. Um, but if you look at the e-commerce industry, Shopify, for example, makes a lot more money than WooCommerce does, but WooCommerce dominates the, the actual user count. And, and what I think we're really looking for is to, to dominate the user, the user accounts or the, the number of active installations simply because uh, we want to just make a lasting impact and really make this a lot more accessible to, to a significant amount of business owners. So we're really, we're really looking for that, that, that 30% of the, of the market share, as it were, eventually. So now your, your focus is more on growth in terms of acquiring new, pe- new customers, new people to adopt the platform. As it yes. Goes. Okay. What about feature sets? Or is there any more features that you plan on? I mean, it's pretty robust as it is from what I could tell. But we, we're adding new features almost on a, on a daily basis. Updates are pretty much at least twice a week. Uh, at the moment, we actually... Uh, Two day, yesterday, we came out with uh, 1.2.1, which introduced a brand new guided setup UI, as well as a, a largely improved uh, contact management uh, screen uh, for people who wanted more robust CRM features. Um, we wow. focused on, at first, a really uh, hardcore on marketing automation, so the funnels and the email builder and all that stuff. Uh, and then in kind of phase two, we focused a lot on the actual CRM aspect of it, managing contacts, exports, tagging, all of those kinds of things. Uh, and going into the future, it's all going to be about refinement of, of those things that already exist. So recently, what we've been working on is a lot of the, is again, more CRM features. So uh, collecting uh, geolocation data for contacts so you can see what their local time zone is so you don't pick up the phone and call them at 3 a.m., which I've done before. <laughs> the person on the other end was not, not exactly pleased with me. Um, uh, being able to send emails in a localized time is going to be a new feature coming out as well. So if you schedule a broadcast for 9 a.m., there'll be a checkbox that says, hey, send this broadcast at 9 a.m. in that person's time zone so that kind of everybody gets it as soon as they wake up and they're checking their emails on their phone and whatnot. Uh, so a lot of refinements like that are planned for the future. You mentioned email, and I know that uh, one of the members in our group, Jonathan, uh, is probably one of the first early adopters in this. I've been following his progress, and I know that a challenge that he had, and not to put you on the spot, but I know the challenge that he had, and it seems like you guys solved for him and helped him through the process. He said Mm -hmm. you were great with support. I want to mention that. Um, But one of the challenges that he came across was trying to set up the email so that the system works, whether through AWS or some other platform. Um, so, so email in any system is kind of a job and a half. And unfortunately, we picked, we picked an industry that, that, that uh, includes email in it. And it is, it is a, it, if you don't understand or you've not been in the email marketing industry as long as I have, it can kind of be of a daunting task. And especially if you set up Amazon SES, which I believe Jonathan did. Right. Uh, Amazon AWS SES is a whole other ballpark. Uh, of and a, and a big big learning curve just on the AWS portion of that, just setting setting up your account and so forth. That's what he was saying, and that's kind of probably what's been pushing me back from getting started. Not that I'm not going to get yeah. started, I'm definitely going to, but I know that I foresee or hear that I'm going to have that same similar challenge. Is there any types of videos or training or something that you might be in the works of that will help us, guys like us? Because it sounds like it's going to be a challenge for almost you know, everyone that wants to set up emails. And- what we've decided to do um, is uh, I don't, uh, there are lots of tutorials that already exist for setting up Amazon SES. Okay. Uh, so we'll, we have a documentation or at least a, in our guided setup in our documentation, we have emails and links to those as our alternative options. Uh, but what we've decided to do, at least in order to make the email process uh, much simpler is we have our own service, uh, which is actually in to all intents and purposes, white labeled SES. However, uh, what it does is it registers your account or, or your, all of your domain names through uh, our SES account. And essentially all it does is it just provides you the DNS records that you need to add and then calls it a day. So there's no uh, need for you to go set up your account uh, and no need for you to kind of go through that pain process. And actually, as soon as you set up those 
uh, DNS records in wherever your, your zones are, the connection process is automatic. Uh, so we, okay. we've automated most of that process and actually show you what that looks like if you want. Yeah, awesome. Absolutely. So uh, it is using, so it uses something called our Groundhog sending service uh, and you can purchase these things. It's a pay as you go service. So it's not free. Uh, we don't deliver it for free, but it is fairly inexpensive and we almost essentially break even for it. Um, it's, ve it's very close to break even. Um, there's a little bit of extra cost built in in order for management and stuff like that. But essentially you can purchase a thousand credits for $3 or 10,000 credits for $30 or so on and so forth. And essentially you send it, you send an email, we deduct a credit. So uh, if you look, for example, and you compare that pricing to, well, I guess, other competitors of ours or other SMTP solutions, uh, it kind of looks, it, it looks pretty attractive. For example, if you send email with Infusionsoft, uh, you pay $99 for 500 contacts and you only get to send 2,500 emails a month, hmm, okay. right? So when you put it into the, kind of that perspective to send 10,000 emails for $30, it's all, you almost get, uh, you get, well, exactly five, no, four times the amount of email for a third of the price. So when you put it in that perspective, it kind of makes a lot of financial sense in order to do that. Plus with the streamlined registration process and you essentially have all of your data in one place and you're not sending email through multiple different sources and so on, it keeps it nice and simple. And the registration process is super easy. So if I just open up a website here, uh, let's go to this one. And uh, hopefully, it's not registered already. Do, 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 there we go. So uh, I'm just gonna take us to the guided setup process. So this will show if you install Groundhog for the first time, it's a nice guided setup process that, that, we just released. that we just released. And it'll bring you to a screen like this. So there'll be a button before you see this information that says, activate the Groundhog sending service, which is totally optional. If you don't want to do that, here are two other options for you to use, which shows Amazon SES and, and the other options as well. Or if you could do this, all you have to do is you have to put these records in your DNS zone and then everything else is automatic in your account area. And I'm leaving right now, so account. forgive me for being dumb here. That information that we just saw in those fields, those are auto-populated and we're grabbing it from here or do we have to find this information somewhere else and drop it in here? So what you do is you just copy this. Uh -huh. So you copy, you copy these fields and then you'd go over to wherever your domain registrar is or your DNS zone. Uh, and then you would copy and paste that information there and then click save and continue and that's it. Nice, okay, that sounds Okay, so, so nothing, nothing else uh, is required from you except for copying and pasting these into your DNS zone. Uh, and if you don't know how to do that, then there's a link there that kind of uh, Googles it for you and shows you how to do it. Uh, and then you can type in your host. So if you have SiteGround, then you would type in SiteGround there as well and it'll show you how to do it specifically for whatever your hosting company is. Nice, okay, great. And then as soon as you do that, uh, it will activate the API as well as uh, provide you with an email sending token, which not, will allow you to send both email as well as SMS messages, uh, which we've actually, and again, in 1.2, made a first class citizen by providing a UI as well as a lot of features uh, for improved SMS sending as well. So to send out SMS messages through Groundhog using this service, we won't need a third-party service to subscription to anything else. This is just no. It would all be it would all be kind of this this one-step setup. So activate, uh, and we'll give you a thousand free credits just for activating it. So you can test it out and see if you like it. Uh, if you end up wanting to go with something else later on, like setting up your own Amazon SES account, you can absolutely do that. Deactivate the uh, service will no longer deduct credits from your account. You can go ahead and go our separate ways. Uh, but with this service, you can send both emails as well as SMS with this, this one service. Oh, that's great. I love it. Yeah. Uh, so uh, in your account, so if you're actually logged into Groundhog in your account, let's just close this stuff here, uh, you will see uh, all of the domains that you currently have registered. Uh, and it'll show you the amount of credits that you have. Uh, and it'll reiterate the information that we had in that guided setup page that you can copy from here as well uh, and stuff like that. All right. And now in your pricing, I noticed there wasn't a, a price break for um, increased numbers. Is Pardon? that something? So, for example, it's $3 for 1000 and then it's $30 for 10000 
Like it doesn't um, ramp no, up. No, it doesn't go down, but that's because it's so close to break even for us already okay. uh, that it doesn't necessarily, we don't, we don't charge more for, for less as you go to the lower tiers, but we don't charge less for more at the high tiers because it's so close to break even. Got it. Okay. We, we, uh, we're like uh, the email service or the, the email and SMS credits is not necessarily meant to uh, uh, generate money. It's just really meant as a, a convenience feature. If you decide to use Groundhog, we'll just make it easy for you to send email and, you don't, and we're not going to make you go and set up all of these other systems. Uh, we just, it was really just, a, 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 at least on our port, to make it convenient for the end user to send email and SMS in, a, in the shortest amount of time possible. Is there, are there any other features similar to this that you guys offer? Well, we're actually, at the moment, we're working on, um, one, of, one of the things is that uh, Groundhog uh, technologically operates on a cron system. So every one minute or every five minutes or every 10 minutes, uh, a request will be made to the WordPress cron system to run through a bunch of events. So emails or SMS messages that need to be sent. And that's how automation works. Uh, traditionally, the, the built-in WordPress cron system is not that great. Uh, it essentially spawns two requests, uh, one to get the page or one to the cron system every time a visitor visits your website. Now, what that means is if you have no traffic, then the cron system doesn't run, which means automation won't run because automation would only run based on the cron system if you have traffic. Hmm. Now, the way around that is to set up what's called a system scheduler, which we have documentation for on our website, which if you have cPanel or, or uh, a, a cPanel or a Joomla powered website or whatever, uh, you'd be able to set up on the back end, so in your server administration area. However, not every website has that. Um, so it can be a bit of a hassle to, to set up a system scheduler. And there are other services that you can go and you can pay a monthly fee for, and they'll send the, or they'll process this cron job for you. Or we're going to set up uh, something, a, a cron system on our site that will ping your website to make sure that uh, automation continues to run every minute or so. And that's actually going to hook in to the same credit system that we're using here. And it's going to charge an X amount of credit credits, uh, X amount of months for, for every request that you make. That's great. In, order to make, in order to ensure that automation runs. And that will be hooked into, or the, the enabling of that process will be hooked into the, um, that initial guided setup that I just showed you as well. So that, uh, that twofold kind of takes care of the two major pain points that people have is my automation isn't running or my emails aren't sending. Uh, and we are looking to essentially just elim eliminate those at, a, at more or less a break even cost uh, relatively, relatively quickly. So this is a service that you're coming out with. It's not there yet. Uh, well, my, my friend Drummond over here is actually just working on it right now. So it should be soon. <laughs> <laughs> Good deal. And do we have an idea what that will cost in addition to the services? Um, we put some initial, uh, uh, some initial Ooh. numbers together and it's looking like uh, around the thousand credit mark for a month. So to send a request, uh, essentially what it'll do is it'll ping your website, your cron system on your website every minute for an entire month. And after that month is up, then we'll uh, calculate the number of the requests and probably deduct around a thousand credits. So that looks about like $10 a month uh, is what that would essentially cost. Okay. So it's a different credit than what I'm looking at on the screen. No, it's going to be built into to, to this credit system as well. So the, the, what, what we're looking to do is the pay-as-you-go service will all be um, hooked in together. So the email credits, the uh, SMS credits, all of those were, are all using this, this one credit system. Okay, uh, so and that, that way it keeps it simplified and we get notified when you're running low and you can just pay as you go and that keeps it nice and simple. Yeah, that keeps it very simple. So I'm looking at this price, and just to clar for clarification, you mentioned a thousand credits is ten bucks, but I see it for three dollars. I just wanted to see what. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm looking at the. I'm dividing by three. Sorry. Yeah, a thousand for three dollars. So it looks like it's running about three dollars a month. I'm sorry. Oh. Thank you for pointing that out to me. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> just trying my to my me. division is off. <laughs> no problem at all. Do you have a roadmap of the features that you guys like? As a developer, for example, if we come up some with some ideas. Um, to add to this, I want to make sure and how the other developers make sure that we're not going to be working on something that you essentially are, are going to be working on. Is there a roadmap that we could see to make sure that it doesn't happen? Well, at the moment, it's, it's pretty much been, uh, I know no one wants to essentially hear this, but a lot yeah. of the features that, that we've finished, people have to us. 
Um, uh, things that are coming out in the near future, for example, is uh, what we are going to be working on is our own uh, really simple payments plugin. So a, a Stripe order form solution uh, that is going to essentially be a very, 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 very pared down and simplified version of your, your basic e-commerce systems that are currently available. Um, so that's something that we're working on. Again, it's, it's pretty, uh, it's very, very simplified. So it doesn't have like tax rates or anything, but that's something that's going to be coming out in the near future, uh, in order to, cause it takes a lot of effort sometimes in order to set up these large e-commerce plugins. Like uh, for example, we use easy, easy digital downloads for our store and a lot of people use WooCommerce, but if you haven't set those up before, it can be a bit of a daunting task. Mm -hmm. So, uh, if you're just selling stuff like eBooks or you're selling appointments or stuff like that, then we're uh, going to release the plugin soon. That's going to be able to kind of take care of those smaller things relatively simply. Um, another one that's coming out is, uh, or another thing that we're working on is an integration for an invoicing plugin. We're not planning on, at least in the near future, making our own invoicing plugin, which is something that people have requested because there are other ones that do it quite well. And, our motto is if someone is already doing it really, really, really well, then we'll provide an integration rather than our own extension, mm -hmm. uh, simply because of the amount of time it takes in order to put together larger extensions. Yeah. Um, but, re but really, uh, it's, more, it's much of uh, what people ask for because we, want, we, we don't have plans to provide products for people or, or products for things that people don't want. So essentially how it works is a request will come in, hey, we need to integrate with X software. Uh, we do a poll to see how many people will actually utilize it. Uh, and then if enough people need it, then we will build it. Uh, or we get a lot of requests through our Facebook page. It's like, hey, does Groundhog do this? And we'll say, no, but that's definitely something that we can implement as well. Um, I think our goal uh, is and I think we've actually already reached that goal is to essentially provide a level of functionality that rivals its software as a service counterparts. Uh, specifically, coming from an Infusionsoft background, that was kind of a benchmark: is can it do everything that Infusionsoft can do and better? Uh, and I think we've actually already reached there. So again, it's, uh, a lot of our future roadmap is about refinement and implementing the tools that people ask for. Uh, does it have like a Zapier integration yet? Yes. So we have that as an extension that we currently offer. Um, that does, that does work both ways. Now it used to only work one way, but now it works both ways. Uh, so essentially you can send, uh, a post or, or send a request from Groundhog to Zapier. And this is a, a free tier Zapier. So it just uses the, the free tier Zapier webhooks, uh, system that, uh, is free with that when you sign up Nice. and you can send, uh, information from Groundhog to Zapier, send it, route it through whatever other API you want. And you can also receive data from uh, other systems as well. well. That's amazing. Maybe we should go through some of the other extensions you have. That way people can get an idea of what is possible. Sure thing. So we have two classes of, of extensions. We have add-ons, which are extensions that add functionality to Groundhog that uh, require no other, uh, no other plugins or no other software as a service. So we currently offer a booking calendar extension, sales pipelines, uh, custom replacement codes, some usability features like form styling. Uh, we offer a really nice one that we actually just worked a lot on, uh, Social Proof, which I'll actually just mention for a second. Um, simply because of the pricing difference between this plugin uh, and a competitor uh, called Use Proof or Get Proof, or I don't know mm -hmm. what they call themselves these days. But yeah. for over a thousand visitors wow. a month to your website for using that software is $79 US a month for over a thousand bidders, which for a small business, if you have maybe one or two employees can add up uh, relatively quickly for uh, a small amount of benefit in most cases. Uh, while we do exactly the same thing with all of the, with mostly the same information, um, and you can't actually see the pricing there, but for less than that per year. So I'll actually just pull that up. So this is a th another service we would pay for, kind of like the credits, um, once you have the extension. Yeah, so for example, this, this Social Proof plugin, I just pulled it up, is $17 a year versus that $79 a month. So large uh, price increases. And a lot of what we, a lot of our extensions is what they do is they take uh, what popular software as a service is already doing, put it into the WordPress environment, make it inexpensive, and make it a lot more user-friendly. 
Uh, so that's a lot of our mandate as well is taking, for example, our sales pipeline uh, is something that uh, PipeDrive does. Uh, and they do really, really, really well with that. But again, we could make that less expensive. Uh, I lost my place here. We can make that less expensive, more user friendly, and allow you to build it directly into your marketing automation as well. Now, going as you show a sales pipeline in a second here, uh, not that you have to go back to the previous screen, but mm -hmm. as proof, the social proof popped up, it had the label by Groundhog. Is that something that we can white label or is that always going to say by Groundhog? Uh, well, exactly. So, you know, exactly as you mentioned that, that's definitely something that we could do. It's currently not available at the moment, but we're always open to feedback. And when people ask for stuff, it's usually something that we'll end up implementing in the future. Uh, we are more than uh, willing to uh, essentially provide the tools and products that people need in order to be successful. Uh, so as you know, we actually have a white label plugin currently available uh, that allows you to white label a lot of the um, branding that is currently exists within the main Groundhog plugin. Uh, we're working slowly in order to extend that to, to our extensions as well. However, when you when essentially you grow you grow as fast as we've done in such a short period of time, it's hard to to keep track of all the places where it says Groundhog somewhere. Yeah. So generally, uh, it's less of a proactive approach and more of a reactive approach. Is if you ask us, we'll end up implementing it, uh, but it's just hard to keep track sometimes. Got it. Makes sense. Okay. I expect to hear from me a lot in the near future. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. Show us a little bit about this sales pipeline or tell us a little bit about it, I should say. Uh, so the sales pipeline, uh, if you're familiar with PipeDrive, uh, it essentially allows you to manage deals that you can set uh, pro or projections for. So uh, closing price projections, date projections, and allows you to drag them through uh, essentially a series of stages. So new... Uh, I'm sorry, I'm trying to think here. So like new lead and then go through consulting or closing and then sold. And then you have one in lost stages in order to track, you know, this deal was lost or this deal was won. And then we can do reporting and forecasting based on those parameters. Um, maybe I can show you, I'm not sure if I have it installed here. Have that other I do, I do have it installed. Look at that, okay. wonderful. Pipelines, here we go. So if I have a pipeline, it looks exactly like this. So a series of stages where I can, that I can reorder, I can add and as well as delete stages and I can add deals. So let's just go ahead and add a deal really quickly. I can set a potential revenue of $1,000. I can set a projected close date for let's say the, the 24th, a priority, some notes about that deal, click add, and then I can drag that through a series of stages and I can come back into this and whenever I uh, successfully move a contact or move a contact through a stage, then that can actually um, trigger some automation in the funnel builder that we have available. And you can trigger this from an automation too, correct? So if someone signs up on the front end and you have it set up to where... Um, that you make that into a deal or a part of your sales. Yeah, so, so from the funnel builder, you can create deals automatically uh, and then put them into any particular stage that you want. Uh, and then that will trigger uh, some automation as well. That's awesome. Yeah, so we, we really thought it through and it's about um, making, because what happens is when you have, uh, for example, pipe drive and you also have active campaign and you have Zapier and you have your website, what, what was really complicated is paying for all of these things and then trying to tie them all together so that it works seamlessly and that it makes sense. So what happens is you're on your, your computer or you're on your desk and you're drawing flow charts and arrows going everywhere. And it's like, that's just too complicated. We'll, we'll consolidate all of these different platforms by providing uh, uh, one extent or one plugin that's easily extendable and takes all of these things into account already so that we can easily add these features in and make sure that it's all kind of one system and one process. Yeah. I got a question. It's kind of a two part question. Um, and basically I know with active campaign, we can set up campaigns and then export those and import them into other client mm. projects. Yes. I think I saw that you have that. We do. And this is actually something that was uh, a priority for me. Uh, the, this is probably one of the first features that I've implemented ever since building this thing. And that was really important is being able to, to easily transfer funnels from one place to the next place in a quick and seamless fashion. 
So if you go to, I'll just open up this, this funnel here. At the top, there are, there are actually two ways to share funnels. You can copy a share link, uh, which is just here, and you can post that on Facebook or send it in an email or, or send it wherever. And as soon as someone clicks that link, it'll immediately just download that funnel right into their browser uh, and where they can import it right back into their WordPress installation or their, or their Groundhog installation. Uh, or you can just click that export funnel button right there and again, downloads directly into your browser. This is just a, a, a basically watermarked JSON file that you can go and you can install anywhere else. So if I wanna take this file, I go to funnels, go to add new, go to import, drag that in, import, and boom, I have that exact same funnel totally remade in this installation. That's great, I love it. And then the second part to that question is, is there, are there any templates that you guys created to kind of get people started? So when you go to add new funnel for the first time, you're brought oh, to this screen, uh, which has uh, most of the templates that anybody will ever need off the bat. So we have welcome series, we have feedback, we have lead magnets, uh, login abandonment, which is great if you have a membership site. Uh, webinar registration, a start from scratch. So you, you know what you want, you know what you're gonna do, uh, and you just want kind of a blank template. Uh, an email preferences center, which is automatically installed for you, so you don't have to worry about that. And kind of all of the other stuff that you need. And as we grow, and you were mentioning at the beginning of this interview, a lot about building a community. Uh, one of the things that is implemented, but just doesn't have much content in it yet, is a marketplace where you will be able to sign up as a vendor on our store. So on groundhog.io as your own uh, seller and then sell your templates uh, on our store for money. Uh, and then those templates will actually show up here. So if I, if I were to type in something like webinar that it actually says to do, it'll, it'll search through our database of templates that currently exist on our store and show all of the templates that, that meet that criteria. Uh, and your template would show up here as well. It would show a buy button or a, or a download button if it was a free platform. It would redirect them to the site where they'd be able to purchase and check out. Uh, and then we will take a 20% commission for just hosting it on our store and call it a day, give them their template and they can bring it back here and they get, go through that import process. Awesome. Now, here's a, something I don't think you probably solved yet, but I guess a request I would have. Is there a way to make it so that we can have our own personalized? I, we don't mind the commission aspect of it. I get mm -hmm. that there's fees associated with that, but the ability to have our own marketplace for our own customers in a WAS environment, because you know we're going to have specific um, templates that we would want to sell them directly. Is mm -hmm. that something that you could provide? Like maybe. Have well, th this entire screen is editable, um, so you can modify the tabs and modify all the content here. Uh, but that would, there, there's not going to be a UI that we're going to build for that. But if you want to take upon yourself to build an extension that would do that and provide you that interface, you are more than welcome to, to do so. That's not necessarily something that is going to be, um, uh, it's all about uh, at this stage, uh, it's about profitability or, or loss in profit and about how would that extension benefit a majority of people and how many people and what would be our, our return on investment for that product. Uh, so that's not something that we're going to build, but the, the developer extensions and APIs and plugins exist within this page in order to do that yourself. You, you have built plugins before, so that's probably something that you might be able to actually resell to, to your group as well. That'd be great. Awesome. All right, there we go. We got another idea. <laughs> <laughs> great. So can you show us, I guess, um, kind of concluding here, maybe the pricing? I know you set up a specific page for us and I'll include it in a link below this video, um, maybe show us kind of what the opportunity is in terms of price and what we get for that. So uh, the uh, price, the special price for the word or the websites as a service group, it's not WordPress as a service, it's websites as a service, correct? Correct. So the websites as a service get special pricing that is not showing here because I'm logged in. So I'm just gonna log out so we can see that. So the websites as a service pricing is uh, $5.99 a year or save two months by going month or sorry. So save two months by going yearly or five, uh, $59 a month. Uh, and this essentially has all of the privileges of an all access pass, uh, but it's just a special license for the uh, uh, multi-site environment. So allowing you to uh, essentially license all of your extensions just from your, your kind of home site and then allow all of your subsites in order to use these extensions and licenses as well. 
Uh, so this is available for you now, um, and it comes with, uh, we don't necessarily have enough users uh, or enough purchasers of this uh, plan yet, but eventually once we kind of reach a, a critical mass and we have enough users, there's going to be a webinar uh, for specifically for people who are on this license every month in order to discuss how people are using the websites as a service license and, and how they've implemented it into the OS and what people are doing in order to make Groundhog successful uh, or, or how to help their customers use Groundhog successfully within their uh, website as a service. Great, that's awesome. And I'm sure that there's many in the group that are, uh, from what I understand, are still in the infancy stages of developing their network. So I'm, I'm imagining that as they get closer to the end, like myself, where we're ready to start implementing this, um, we'll, you'll see that growth for sure. I can I can imagine why anyone wouldn't want to add this as a um, an extension to their service. Mm -hmm. So uh, something that I do want to mention is if you if uh, anybody does uh, decide to use Groundhog as their marketing automation solution for their for their WAS, uh, something that is important is making sure that their clients do not go through the same struggles of setting up email and SMTP and stuff like that. So if you decide to also use the credit system that we have implemented for your WAS, what mm. happens is as soon as a new subsite is registered and you have this WAS license on your site, as soon as a new uh, website is registered, it'll automatically register that website with your account. Uh, and then any emails that get sent uh, via the credit system will be billed to your account. Uh, and that way, but you can charge however much you want for sending credits on your site. Uh, as well and charge a markup for that as well. So that way you've kind of eliminated their problems for sending email and setting up that stuff as well. And that way they can send SMS as well as um, email through the credit system, zero hassle. So that's something that's cool as well. That's great. Is there a way to track these credits and how they're being used throughout the system so that we know we can keep them accountable to paying for their usage? Uh, well, all of your credits are shown um, Let's see. Uh, in your account, I'm I'm logged out, but all of the all of the credits are used are shown in your account, and the domains will be shown uh, with the number of credits used in their account as well. Oh, perfect. Okay, perfect. And could we create an automation that builds them with that through the system? Uh, well, that would be something that you could potentially take upon yourself. Uh, whenever a request is made to the system, our, our system from the website, we return the number of credits remaining for the account. Uh, and essentially you can build in your own hooks and stuff in order to track the number of credits that they use and build them appropriately. Um, all of those developer extensions exist at the moment in order to be able to do that. But that's not something that we've necessarily taken into account and built ourselves at this time. And I don't think we plan on building it because there's so many different ways that someone would be able to go about doing that, that there's, uh, we don't want to impose any one way in order to, to, to go through that process. But the, the APIs and the extensions and the hooks are there in order to be able to do that yourself. All right, great. Now there's a lot of potential and possibility with this. I'm excited to get it started. And there's obviously things that I need to decide on my end in terms of strategy and how to bill and all that. So yeah, there's a lot to it for sure. But it's what you put together here uh, is nothing short of amazing. It's awesome. Um, and thank you. I want to thank you for your time. Is there anything else that you would like to share with us before we conclude? I don't want to take up all your day. Uh, well, the, 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 I think the one last thing that I really want to hammer home is that uh, there uh, it's risk-free really. So, this is a free product first and foremost. So if anybody has trepidation, you know, before they, they hunker down and they commit to $5,599 or $59 or whatever it is, that they go, they install it on, their, on a test website and they run through it and they see if they like it. And if they do, then they're more than happy to make a, or you're more than welcome to come back and, and purchase a WAS license. If you don't, then it's absolutely no risk. You just delete the plugin and, and find another solution. So I just, that's, one thing that I really, really want to hammer home is that uh, please try before you buy uh, and make sure it's the right fit for you. Great. Great. Awesome. Right. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you so much for uh, inviting me to, to come talk. I really appreciate it. Uh, I know that you have a very active group and, and a bunch of really, really talented people in a very small space. And I appreciate uh, the fact that you wanted to share me with them. Thank you. I, no, it's, it's been great. We, uh, as you know, we've probably been in touch with you for the last month, month and a half. Uh, one of the members in the group, Jaime, brought you to our attention and I'm glad that he did because this is, was probably one of the best finds 
out there. And I'm glad we got in on the early stages so that we can um, be a part of the, your growth. So awesome. And I wish you the best of luck. And I'm sure we'll stay in communication, especially as I start the, um, adding this to our own WAS. I can imagine uh, I'll be asking you a lot of questions or at least not questions, but more of um, requests. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. You're welcome. And uh, I, I guess I look forward to implementing them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, have a great rest of your day and uh, look forward to talking to you soon. You too. Take care. Right, bye.